Hi everyone, my name is Mary Lou Areño. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. So, I am going to present to you the series on how to apply for a job in the United States without spending a lot of money. I know there are so many people who are dreaming to come and work in the United States, but what is the process on doing it? So for, for my series, I will start with uh, knowing first what kind of visa you need to come to the United States. So that is the series one that will include in this episode. And then next, I will proceed to how are you going to look for job vacancies. And then we will move to uh, filing your application, completing uh, all the requirements, and preparing for your credentials. And then we can proceed with a guide for interview when you find the right job that you would like to apply for. And uh, once you get the job, where do we go from there? What are the requirements, the preparations, who can sponsor your visa, and uh, how do you go for interview at the embassy and your travel to the U.S and your arrival. So it's really a long process. That is why I decided to split the topic in several series. So for today's series, I will focus on know the visa. You should know the visa that you need in order for you to work in the United States. So I hope you will learn a lot from this episodes and series of topics regarding how to apply for a job in the United States without spending your fortune. Let's begin. So I would like to uh, emphasize that Teacher's Best Friend channel is not a recruitment agency nor a legal counsel. All information provided are based on knowledge personal experience and research. And if there are questions along the way that you would like to ask, and um, I can also consult my own legal counsel regarding immigration to provide you the exact answer. So let's proceed. Series one, know the type of visa you need to work in the United States. So the first visa that uh, you would like to apply or something that you can use if you intend to work in, in the United States is what they call J-1 visa or the exchange visitor program. So J-1 visa, they call it exchange visitor program, is given to teachers to other professionals like a physician, trainees, uh, engineers, even nurses, and um, mostly educators and professors. And this is also given to high school and college students and they call them the J-1 exchange students. If you have a J-1 visa, you can bring with you your family through a J-2 visa. And J-2 is a J-1 visa dependent. That's your spouse and your minor children. You can apply for J-2 visa for them so that they can join you in the United States. So these are some of the job that can use the J-1 visa. If you can look at the left side here, it says the purpose of visit, why do you need a J-1, what is the position or your job in your home country, and your eligibility to a J-1 visa, and your duration of visit in the United States. It differs depending upon the kind of job or contract that you'll get. And can you go back when your J-1 visa expire? So look at this one. There's the short-term scholars, the professors and research, the precision, even the intern, trainee, and other specialists. 
So let's move to the next chart. In here, I would like to emphasize on the requirement for teachers. So you'll see there the secondary school student, those are the high school that are going to 11th grade, and college students as well, and even summer work travel, the counselors, and the, the au pair, and uh, here the teacher. So if you are a teacher and you wish to apply in the United States, you have the option to use the J-1 visa. So all you need to do is find your employer and then your employer can use a sponsoring agency to process your J-1 visa. But that is included in my next series, how to find the job, where to find the job. But in this series, I will focus only on the types of visa. So for a teacher, if you are a J-1 visa, you can teach in the United States uh, under the K-12 to schools, that's elementary until high school or 12th grade. And um, you should be a teacher also in your country of origin and at least have a experience at least two years and you have a bachelor degree that's the minimum but the higher degree you have like masters or doctorate the better uh, your credentials are but the minimum requirement is just bachelor's degree and two years experience in order to apply for a j1 visa and um, the contract for teachers under the j1 is up to five years at first they will give you an initial of three years and um, the employer has the right to extend that up to another two years depending on your performance and uh, the need for your position in that particular school so that is the j1 visa you can just go back and read the chart later because it's a lot of details so let's move to the other type of visa. It's called the H-1B visa, or they commonly call it the working visa. Who is qualified to get the H-1B visa? So most of the bachelor's degree holder are qualified to get the H-1B. And those are the areas of sciences, medicine uh, medicine such as the PT, OT, the speech therapies, and um, also the health care like uh, the nurses and uh, caregivers and education those are the teachers the biotechnologies business specialties and other professionals with bachelor's degree are qualified to get the H1B visa and if you get the H-1B and you are married, you can bring your children and spouse with you through H-4 visa. That is the dependent of the H-1B holder. H-1B visa released annually in the United States is limited to 65,000, that's every year. But there is an additional of 20,000 for advanced degree exemption. So usually the 65,000 is available to all people around the world who would like to apply in the United States. That is the number of visa available worldwide that US can give uh, for people who wish to work in the United States and the 20,000 additional for some special qualifications and for some institutions that have the privilege. So with a total of uh, 85,000 H-1B visa released every year by the United States, that's the high, it's a high chance that you can be one of them. So remember, J-1 and H-1B are non-immigrant visas. They are only temporary and for working purposes or study purposes in, in, in the case of J-1 high school and college students. But these non-immigrant visas, you can use them as stepping stone to get immigrant visa later. 
if you meet the requirements in the long run. So you don't worry about that um, getting the immigrant visa. You can come as J1 or H1B and then later as you stay longer in the United States, uh, you develop your credentials and your employer will like you and that can lead to an immigrant visa or the green card or even later to a U.S. citizen uh, uh, status. So that is just a stepping stone. Another kind of visa that you can apply for, which is the immigrant-based visa, they call it the employment-based immigrant visa, and it has five categories. They call it E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5. Or sometimes they call it EB1 or employment based 1 or employment based 2 or EB2 and so on. So let's let's see what are these uh, categories of visas that you can avail. So for E1 or the EB1, they call it the employment first preference. These are the priority worker and persons of extraordinary ability. So um, these are the persons that has uh, extraordinary abilities in sciences, arts, education, business, and even athletics. And um, another one are those professors and researchers that are already uh, have long experiences and have conducted several research and they are professors for so many years and another uh, group of people who are qualified for E1 are the multinational executives and managers. So the next one is the E2 or the EB2. This is the employment second preference. These are the professionals holding advanced degrees and persons of exceptional ability. So um, this can be the professionals who have master's degree or PhD or they have experience more than five years. So the key word is your experience must be more than five years and you have the advanced studies in education, arts, sciences, and business. What is E3 or the EB3 employment third preference? Uh, this is for the skilled workers and uh, some professionals. So skilled workers with at least two years of experience and training. And these can be like the chef who are really good in what they're doing and they have at least two years experience. And uh, some skilled workers in construction but you need, you need to prove your experience. You need to prove that you are really highly skilled in order to be qualified for EB3. And uh, that includes also the professionals with at least baccalaureate degree or the one with the AB or BS degree in, um, in any other professions like in education, in engineering, in, in other uh, prof professions that is under the AB or the BS. And the minimum requirement for the experience here is at least two years. So if you don't have a two years experience, you will not fall on this category as well. And if you have more than five years, then you no longer fit in E3. You need to be in the E2 or the second preference. And then the next one is the E4 and E5. This is the fourth preference uh, with certain special immigrants. So let's say um, this includes the broadcasters, the ministers of religions like the priests and pastors and others. So let's say you are a broadcaster and you find a job in the United States and the employer like you, then you can apply for E4 as an immigrant and you can be a permanent resident in the United States if uh, you were given an E4 uh, visa or the green card visa. And for the E5, those are the fifth preference. These are the people who can create business and jobs 
in the US. So these are the investors who would like to come to the United States to put up their business and they will hire Americans or local people and they will establish their business here and they are given a green card as well under the fifth preference or the EB5. So those are the different categories of the immigrant visas, the E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5. So I know there are so much uh, details to remember and to memorize, but um, I encourage you to watch again the video and uh, read the two charts that I provided under the J1. And um, if you have questions regarding the H-1B or the, the immigrant visas under those five categories, please write your comments down below and it's my pleasure to answer them. And if it is uh, like more complicated, I can also uh, ask for the opinion of, of my immigrant uh, legal counsel. So I hope you learned from this episode knowing the different types of visa that you can apply for if you would like to work in the United States. So, next episode, I am going to present on how are you going to look for jobs? Where can you find those jobs in order to apply for the visa that you already discovered? So, watch out for my next episode. I will uh, show you where to look for a job and how to apply for the job vacancies in the United States. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you will find this information useful. And I wish you good luck. And if you would like to uh, email me questions, there is the email below, email to the teachers best friend at gmail.com. So thank you so much and uh, I'll see you on the next episode which is about um, looking for job vacancies. So bye for now, and to God be the glory. Thank you for watching. See you next time.